This video will demonstrate how to record service revenue to be paid with a long-term note receivable under three independent scenarios, a blended payment note, an interest-only note, and a zero-interest note. This video will also demonstrate some basic present value concepts including how to use your calculator to determine a blended payment and present value of the three different notes, as well as how to create amortization tables for the notes. Here is the data for our problem. On January 1st, 20Y1, Acme Consulting Corporation performed services for Wiley Manufacturing Limited valued at $150,000. Due to adverse economic conditions, Wiley was unable to pay Acme. However, based on their positive historical business relationship, Acme agreed to accept a three-year note receivable from Wiley at a preferential interest rate of 5% when the market rate was 7.5%. Acme has a September 30th year-end. There are three independent requirements for this problem. 1. Assuming the note receivable from Wiley is to be repaid in annual blended payments of interest and principal each December 31st, determine the amount of the annual payment and record the applicable journal entries for all of 20Y1 and December 31st, 20Y3. 2. Assuming the note receivable from Wiley is an interest-only note requiring annual interest payments and the principal due at the end of 20Y3, determine the amount of the annual payment and record the applicable journal entries for all of 20Y1 and December 31, 20Y3. 3. Assuming the note receivable from Wiley is a zero-interest note with the principal due at the end of 20Y3, Determine the amount of the annual payment and record the applicable journal entries for all of 20Y1 and December 31, 20Y3. Let's start with requirement 1 and the blended payment note receivable. The first thing we need to do here is calculate the blended payment of the note, and to do that, we need to use our financial calculator and enter the following variables. 3N, since the term of the note is 3 years. 5IY, since the interest rate on the note receivable is 5%. 150,000 PV, which represents the amount of the note to be paid over the period. And 0FV, since at the end of the term with the blended payments, the final balance of the note should be zero. We compute the payment and we should end up with an annual blended payment of $55,081, rounded. The next step is to record the present value of the note based on the payment but this time, using the market rate of interest, which is the implicit rate that Acme must use to account for the note receivable. Using our calculator again, we enter 3N for the term, but now the interest rate is 7.5 IY, which is the market rate of the note. Then we enter 55,081 for the payment as we just calculated, zero is the future value, or FV, and now compute the PV which should be $143,240. It's important to note here that we calculate the payment using the interest rate on the note and then use that payment along with the market rate of interest to recalculate the present value of the note for accounting purposes. Now, the next thing we want to do is prepare a basic amortization table for the note that on January 1st year 1 will have a beginning balance of $143,240 which is the calculated present value. The payment of the note happens every year on December 31st, so on December 31st year 1 the cash payment is $55,081. The interest is calculated on the balance of the note of $143,240 multiplied by the implicit, or effective interest rate, which is the market rate we use to calculate the PV, or 7.5%. Multiplying 7.5% times 143,240 results in interest of $10,743. Next, we determine the amortization of the principal balance that's the difference between the cash payment and the interest income we just calculated, so 55,081 minus 10,743 is amortization of $44,338. Then to determine the ending balance, we take the previous balance of $143,240 and subtract $44,338 to end up with a balance of $98,902. Next, we repeat the process for year 2. 
The payment is the same every year, so all we need to do next is calculate the interest income using the year 1 ending balance of $98,902 and multiply by 7.5% to end up with interest of $7,418, which we subtract from the cash payment of $55,081 to end up with principal amortization of $47,664 and an ending year 2 balance of $51,238. For year 3, the payment is the same and we calculate the interest to be 7.5% times the year 2 ending balance of $51,238, resulting in interest income of $3,843, which when subtracted from the cash payment results in principal amortization of $51,238 and then a final balance of zero, which is exactly what we want, since the note should be paid off after the third payment. You should pause the video here to make sure that you can confirm all of the values in the amortization table. Now on to our journal entries, where we are asked to prepare all of the journal entries for year 1 and the December 31st journal entries in year 3. Starting with the recognition of the note on January 1st year 1, we will debit the note receivable for the present value calculated as $143,240 and credit consulting revenue for the same amount. Note here that we are not recognizing revenue of $150,000, which is the value of the services performed, but rather we recognize the revenue to be the present value of the note receivable. Next, we have an intervening year end at September 30th year 1, where we must accrue interest receivable from the date of the note. So, we will debit interest receivable for the prorated portion of the year 1 interest, calculated as 10,743 times 9 out of 12 months, January 1st through September 30th inclusive, which results in interest receivable of $8,057. We will also credit interest income for the same amount. The next entry in year 1 is the December 31st payment entry where we will debit cash for the amount received of $55,081. We will credit interest receivable for the amount accrued at September 30th of $8,057. We will credit interest income for the remaining three months worth of interest from October 1st to December 31st inclusive, which is the 10,743 total year one interest, less the $8,057 previously accrued amount which equals $2,686. This can also be calculated as 10,743 times 3 over 12 months. Then we will also credit the note receivable for the principal amortization in year 1 of $44,338. Finally, for the December 31st year 3 entry, we will debit cash for the payment of $55,081 credit interest receivable for the September 30th year 3 accrual, which would have been calculated as $3,843 in year 3 income multiplied by 9 out of 12 months, which equals $2,882. We will credit interest income for the difference between the year 3 income and the receivable accrual, or simply 3,843 times 3 out of 12 months, or $961 and we will credit the note receivable for the principal amortization of $51,238. This is the final entry for the blended payment note receivable. We can also observe in this situation that over the three-year life of the note receivable ACME will earn $143,240 in consulting revenue and $22,004 in interest revenue.